Can we talk about uh, some of the use cases uh, and um, institutions, projects, companies using Stellar right now? So you mentioned some uh, pretty big ones uh, uh, earlier. Uh, you mentioned the Franklin Templeton Fund, um, the UN, you know, a couple of other institutions using Stellar. So yeah, we'd, we'd love to kind of dive into these use cases. Sure. So like I said, uh, in the heart of the Stellar network, there is uh, the Anchor network. The Anchor network is a set of interoperable on and off ramps around the world. So it's basically like uh, a financial institution that will implement a set of APIs for depositing and withdrawing. Uh, so for example, I think I mentioned, uh, for example, Ntokens in Brazil, they use the, um, the Brazilian um, fast payment service, uh, fast bank payment service, it's called PIX, to allow you to move from uh, REI in your bank account to REI in, uh, to a REI stable coin through the PIX uh, um, messaging layer. So it's a matter of seconds to move between like, uh, you know, between a bank account and, and, a, and a Stellar wallet. Uh, similar with uh, uh, Argentina, for example, we have Settle, which do the same thing with the Argentinian Peso. So we have a lot of these companies around the world. MoneyGram, like I said, is the biggest one. Uh, and they have like this really uh, robust global cash network uh, that you can move between USDC on chain and your local currency on and off. Um, and so we already have payment services that are utilizing this, uh, especially uh, payment disbursements is a, is, a, is a use case that has really caught on. Um, specifically, what I mentioned before is that uh, the UNHCR and the IRC, which are uh, refugee organizations, part of the UN, uh, they're actually dispersing aid in uh, Ukraine using that network. So dispersing cash um, uh, cash aid is actually an extremely difficult task. And usually you will actually have people uh, that are kind of like on the boots on the ground that are actually delivering cash. Uh, one interesting thing is that uh, MoneyGram is still active in Ukraine. And so what, the, what these UN organizations are doing is basically they're deploying Stellar wallets to their, uh, to their users. And then the user or the recipient can choose whether to hold a stablecoin in their wallet or to take this out as cash using a MoneyGram agent. So if they're like about to cross a border, for example, which often happens with refugees, they probably don't want to be carrying like a lot of cash on them. So we, they would rather keep this as a as a stable coin. Uh, but if they are actually uh, if they actually need to do shopping with or whatever with uh, with the funds, they can actually take them out of a MoneyGram agent. Uh, so that's been uh, super helpful, and uh, we're seeing this like payments and disbursements use cases really uh, taking off. Not necessarily just in aid, but also in things like. Uh, payroll services, for example. So let's say, for example, that you have a company that has like a, a global payroll and you need like a unified way to send people money. The Anchor Network can help you do that. Super interesting. I mean, you, you mentioned a disbursement of cash to uh, uh, third world uh, countries and to uh, refugees. And um, I'd love to hear kind of the, uh, the potential challenges you've come across in um, just, you know, kind of the learning curve of getting um, people to just like regular people, non-crypto people to use a wallet uh, to transfer, you know, uh, tokens and convert to cash. Like, what's that education process like? And like, do you need like a huge team to be on the ground, um, you know, helping uh, this happen? Like, how, how has that uh, been? Yeah. So uh, luckily, when uh, when the UN started talking with us about this, we have already established some really important infrastructure to make this happen. So like I said, the, the MoneyGram and the Anchor Network uh, were already there. Another thing that was already there is that for the past few years, we've been developing um, uh, a non-custodial wallet in-house. We call this Vibrant. Um, and Vibrant is a wallet that is really focused on the non-crypto native user. Uh, so the idea is there is no complicated like key management for the user. The 
uh, all the transfers are gasless transfers. Um, so really, really focused on like the common user. Uh, it's still non-custodial. We have basically this, um, uh, we implemented the recovery signer method in which you actually distribute shards of your keys to like third parties. And then if you lose your, uh, if you lose your phone, if you lose access to the app, you can actually recover your account by authenticating with, uh, with two recovery signer service, uh, services. So we've already put a lot of effort into making this, uh, into making this user friendly. Um, and when the Ukraine project started happening, what we've done is we've taken this vibrant wallet. We actually created a new build of it that is like completely, um, kind of like vanilla and, and really, uh, like doesn't have any advanced crypto features. So really just focused on what these users are doing, which is holding the money and cashing out. And that's it, right? Like really, a really simple user experience. Um, and so that has been, uh, you know, super helpful. Um, you know, there's definitely, this has been, uh, you know, a, a learning curve for us. And we've learned this, uh, survivor is mostly used these days in outside of the Ukraine context. It's actually used in Argentina for, um, for hedging against inflation. And so for the past few years, we've been learning about all the difficulties that people have in, in onboarding to, uh, to a crypto wallet and have been dealing with that. Um, and actually, in the past, uh, ever since the presidential elections in Argentina, uh, we've been seeing uh, a, a huge uh, demand for, for like these type of financial instruments. And because there are like less regulatory hurdles these days, uh, these things are really picking up.